In this session, we're going to cover a fairly advanced topic, using low-level libraries written in the C language with Swift. Even if you don't expect to be using C libraries with your own code in the near future, there's a lot you can learn by examining this task. In fitting with Swift's goal to be a serious systems development language, interoperability with C code was a key feature from the very first release of Swift. These features were much improved in Swift 3, and you should hopefully find the APIs quite pleasant to work with. Native interoperability with C++ code is also scheduled for a future Swift release, although it's not clear when this will happen. It doesn't appear likely for Swift 5, so that could mean it won't appear until as late as 2019 for Swift 6. In the meantime, it's possible to write wrappers for C++ code using Objective C++, a relative of Objective C. We won't be covering this topic in this course, however. In spite of this, topics covered in this section will hopefully be quite transferable when native support is complete. If you've never done any C programming, or you haven't done enough to work with pointers, don't let this put you off studying this section. You should find Swift's pointer manipulation APIs quite pleasant to work with, and there's a lot more you can learn in the process. Before studying this section, it's strongly recommended that you have a good understanding of how Swift's automatic reference counted memory management system works. Provided you feel reasonably comfortable with this topic, studying this section should hopefully solidify your understanding. As well as covering the topics of compiling C code as part of an Xcode project and working with unmanaged pointers, there are a number of other cut. As well as covering the topics of compiling C code as part of an Xcode project and working with unmanaged pointers, there are a number of other interesting topics we'll be able to cover in this section. We'll have a chance to explore using Swift's features to develop a type-safe API design, that is, a design where we can employ Swift's type system to avoid programming errors, while still maintaining a user-friendly API. We'll be developing a real-world generic class and also using some protocol extension techniques. On top of that, we have a chance to demonstrate overcoming some other challenges and making good use of other Swift features. So let's get started by doing an overview of how you can work with a C library and possibly other languages that might be supported in the future. Let's start by overviewing the major steps. First of all, you need to acquire the library. Then you need to compile the source code, possibly as part of the build process in an Xcode project. Then you need to link this code into your compiled Swift source. This step is very much dependent on the kind of library you use. We'll be using a reasonably simple example in this section. Next, you need to use one of a number of techniques to expose the library's header files to Swift. If you aren't familiar with C header files, these describe the interface of the library. Xcode is able to do quite a lot to convert these to a convenient format for us. This leaves only the third topic to handle. Finally, you must use this code or develop your own wrappers to make the library convenient to use within other Swift code. This involves working with unmanaged pointers quite often and is usually the most challenging part of the process. Before we start working on the project, let's introduce the task that we'll use as a demonstration. We're going to be building a Swift wrapper for a k-dimensional tree data structure. If you're not familiar with a KD tree, it's a space partitioning data structure that allows us to store points and find their nearest neighbors. We don't need to understand very much about its inner workings, it's just a simple example. You can, however, learn more about this data structure on Wikipedia under the above link. This is a great example of a library to use since it's a reasonably uncommon tool, the likes of which you might have trouble finding coded in native Swift. We're going to be working with a small open source example written in C by John Siombakis. It's available on GitHub under the above link. So let's get started right away. We'll set up a new Xcode project, download the KD tree library code, and then set up our project to compile and link it. Okay, so let's get started making the project in Xcode. I'll just be creating a normal project, new project, and we're going to be making a command line tool for this example. Next, language Swift, of course, I'm going to call the project KD tree. I'm going to save this on my desktop here. And that's all we need to do to start the project. Nothing particularly interesting there. Okay, so now that we've got the project set up, let's go ahead and download the C library for the KD tree from GitHub and integrate it with the project. I'm on GitHub right now at the project page. Here is the username and the project as we showed in the slides. 
So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to download a zip file of the project just for simplicity. So we can select here, download zip. Okay, and I have my project here on the desktop. The first thing I'm going to do is drag the project source files into my project directory. So I have KD tree master inside here. Now let's return to Xcode and in the project navigator on the left hand side, I'm going to select add files to KD tree. And here is the downloaded library folder, KD tree master. And if we click add, you'll see that in the project navigator, we then have all of the files for the library, but we aren't going to build this library directly in Xcode. We're going to use an external build, build tool to build the library. So the first thing we need to do is select our target and on the project panel, on the top bar, we have build phases. And I'm going to add a build phase that just runs a shell script that builds this simple library. There are a lot of different ways you would build external libraries. I'm just going to take a simple approach for this example. So we have this plus button in the top left. If we press this button, we have new run script phase. I want to drag this phase higher in the build order. So it's almost at the top. I can't drag it any higher than here. And if you press the arrow key, we have a window here where we can type in a shell script. So for this particular library, it depends on which library you're using. We're using a, a small version of an auto tools configure and make. So in this script, I'm going to CD into KD tree dash master. And the command I'm going to use is configure and make. Now in the example of this library, we have to use a little bit of a trick because when we build this library, it'll build a static library and a dynamic library. We don't want the dynamic library, otherwise Xcode will try to use it and that won't work with this kind of application. So I'm going to delete that file that it creates as part of the build process. Now that we've created that script, let's build with command B and you'll see now appearing in the directory of the KD tree library, libkdtree.a, that's the static library. So the next thing we need to do is tell Xcode to link with the library and also where it can find the header files. So let's go back to build settings. Make sure you have all selected on the left hand side here. And you'll see you have a search box on the right hand side. I'm going to type in search path and you see we have two entries here, header search paths and library search paths. So you'll see we have a column here, which is for the KD tree target that we're working on. If we start by double clicking on the library search paths, a window pops up. And if we use the plus button at the bottom here, we can add an entry. And we're going to give the directory to the KD tree C library. So that's again, KD tree dash master. And we're going to do the same thing for the header search paths so that Xcode can find the headers for that library. So again, double click plus KD tree dash master and enter. Let's do a build. Everything's okay. So we have now built the library, told Xcode where to find the library and its headers. So the final step is to link our target KD tree with the binary version of the C library. So that's of course this libkdtree.a file, which was built as part of the build process. In the build phases, panel again, we have another section here, link binary with libraries. 
open that and we can simply drag the static library into this section, build again, and we'll run just to make sure that everything's running okay. And there you go. So we downloaded the C library, added its source files to the project, built them as part of the normal build process, told Xcode where to find the library and the header files, and linked the static library of the C library into our target. Okay, so we're almost finished preparing the project. The final step we need to take is to expose the library's header file to Swift so it can expose those functions to our Swift code. So if you look in the KD tree master directory, we have here a file kdtree.h. This is the header file, the C header file for the library containing all of its functions. In the previous step, we went to the build settings, header search, and we told Xcode it can find header files in this directory here. So the next thing we have to do is actually import that header file. We do this for an application target by creating what's called a bridging header, which is a normal C header in which we import any other header files we'd like to expose to Swift. So a trick I like to use to create the bridging header a little bit more quickly in a Swift project is just this. If we select our group in Xcode, create a new file. If we select Coco class, next. And if we select Objective C as the language, and we'll just give our class a name temp because we're just going to create this file temporarily and press next and create it in our project. Doesn't matter where, it's only temporary. Now you'll see that Xcode brings up this message. Would you like to configure an Objective-C bridging header? So we can use the same bridging header file for C code as well. And this is just a slightly quicker way of creating the header. So select create bridging header. And you'll see that Xcode has created our temp class and also the file bridging header. Use this file to import your target's public headers that you would like to expose to Swift. So I can now just delete that temporary class. We just use that as a shortcut. And select the bridging header. And we're going to use a standard C import. Import kdtree.h. Now because we've told Xcode where to find our library's headers, it will find kdtree.h in the directory kdtree master. Save that file. If you're interested in the build setting that gets created for the bridging header, if we go back to project settings, build settings, if we type in bridging, you'll see that we now have that file kdtree slash kdtree dash bridging dash header dot h. That's the file that was created automatically because we use that trick. All right, so let's build, check that everything's okay. No errors. Okay, let's go to our main file and let's just check that everything's okay by trying to use one of those kdtreec functions. So I'm just going to put let tree equal. All of the kdtree library functions begin with a kd underscore. So you see they're now appearing in the autocomplete. I'm just going to use this KD create as example. And the parameter here K is the number of dimensions in the tree. So let's just put two for a two dimensional tree. Run the project and everything's okay. So the last thing we'll do before we finish is just create the class file that we'll be using. Again in KD tree, new file, Swift file, and I'm going to call this file kdtree because that's the name of the library. Create. 
and here is our source code file for the library so let's just make a template for the class we're going to use final class kd tree and again let's run the project that check everything is okay okay great so now we're ready to start implementing our kd tree swift wrapper class join me in the text sections and we'll detail the implementation let's access Xcode's auto-generated Swift interface for the KD Tree C library header. In the navigation panel, open the C library folder and select the kdtree.h header file. Here we have the original C header. If we go up to the bar at the top, you see this icon in the top left, related items. If you click this menu, go down to the bottom here, there's the generated interface option and you have the option here to generate a Swift 4 interface or a Swift 3 interface. Let's go for Swift 4 and give it some time to work and you'll see now that the file reopens and we have a very similar file but you'll notice that all of the functions from the C library have now been auto-generated to use a Swift compatible interface. You'll see the use here of opaque pointer. We'll be using this interface to get started in our tree implementation.